Hello everyone. Today I'm going to introduce to you day of scoring metrics. This one is well known for checking the similarity of different amino acids. So let's start with this formula which we use for day of scoring metrics. Uh, let's go through the details. What is SIJ? So we already uh, familiar with uh, scoring uh, metrics, and this one has two dimensional case. Like we have row and column. For example, M to N metrics. Now, how to find the score of each cell inside this matrix? For that, we can use this logarithm based two. And what is QIJ? QIJ is the observed probability of co-occurrence and, and PI and PJ we have for each uh, individual probabilities. So when we talk about QIJ, it means that uh, we already observed, uh, for example, A aligning with L, for example, two different amino acids. So how often uh, did we observe them before? Database to another one, it could be different. The probability could be different because we don't know exactly what's the percentage in nature. You know, we didn't check all the genomes already. But based on the databases, we can have some ideas about it. So QIJ is related to the uh, observation of the relative frequency of two different amino acids and we talk about the similarity of between them. In that scenario if we just fix on specifically two amino acids then we can find the uh, relative frequency. When I talk about relative frequency it means that how many of them we observed over all the observations for all amino acids. So we will talk about it. And PI and PJ is related to just one single amino acid. Now BLAST uses these scoring metrics to find its E values. So as we mentioned inside databases, they already have information about different sequences. So based on the relative frequency, they can come up with probabilities like Q, PI, and PJ. But FASTA uses a different approach to find its E values based on histogram of score. So FASTA database doesn't use uh, this type of formula to find its E values. And as we mentioned before, uh, E values could be different from one database to another. And as you can see, not only the probabilities can change, they don't even use the same formula for their E value. So what do we mean by similarity of amino acids? We talked about it before, like uh, some uh, amino acids, uh, if by mistake, maybe by mutation, uh, something happens in true uh, evolution, then in that scenario we see uh, the protein has the same function, it didn't change that much. Or sometimes there are changes but they are not that much, uh, still it's functional. So in that scenario, we can talk about similarity of amino acids. We mentioned about some factors like if uh, that part, uh, that amino acid is uh, attracted to water or not, then also that's another story which is related to a similarity of amino acids. So uh, we can talk about it. Uh, some amino acids, if we have substitution of them, it's okay, but if you are using mismatch, then you should tell those who are not similar maybe more. And the next one, in nature, can we observe similar amino acids by looking at proteins which were synthesized from various genomes? Yes, of course we can, but as we said, for different databases, if they have more information about different genomes, about uh, different, uh, for example, domains, and in that case, of course, the E value that you will receive is bigger. I mentioned about it because 
it shows that how many similar uh, random algorithms that we can have to produce the same sequence that you came up with. So of course, when your database is bigger, that's bigger too. But uh, of course, uh, if you have more information in your uh, database, if you have more data, and uh, it is more trustworthy. If you find the e-value there, this is more trustworthy comparing to other databases. So the answer of this question is obviously yes, but it has its own challenges. Now let me give you one simple example related to uh, day of scoring metrics. So assume that uh, A amino acid, this is the name of the amino acid. Uh, you know, you can show them by just one single letter instead of three or the whole name of it. So we have A and L in this example. Assume that A amino acid occurs in sequences by relative frequency of uh, one person. Whenever we talk about relative frequency, this one is equivalent to probability. As we mentioned, the number of occurrence over the whole possibility that we have, so it constructs the probability. And uh, L amino acid, so for this one, we have also a probability. These are the margin of probabilities, PA and PL. So inside this formula, it's already given to us about these marginal probabilities. So whenever we are talking about co-occurrence of if the observed relative frequency of AL, so for the co-occurrence of these two amino acids together, this one is given to us. This is 3 over 1,000. So you see for co-occurrence, this is Q, and you can show it in the, inside the formula like this. Logarithm base 2 is fixed anyway for all the formulas. So now if we ask you to calculate it, what's the score of aligning A with L inside my uh, scoring metrics and use Dayhoff formula for that, then easily you can find it. See? So 3 over 1,000 uh, over uh, 3%, uh, I mean uh, 1%, and at the end you will have uh, 3. Oh, sorry, this is uh, 1 over 1,000, so you will have 3. And this one happens to be, at the end, this scoring uh, for the sale of that scoring matrix. OK, guys, so uh, this uh, lecture was pretty short. We finished uh, the discussion regarding uh, the significance of uh, sequence alignment when it comes to a statistic. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, we will continue next week uh, with uh, suffix trace.